I hate it when I'm being sad that I don't have a boyfriend and some guy that I don't know will be like, oh, I bet so many guys want to date you, but like I have to get to know them. But once I get to know them, they usually find something that they don't like about me soon enough. So the conclusion is I'm the problem. True. I've come to the realization that there's so many benefits of having me in your life. And that's why I made the decision last night to block all of the men that I've ever spoken to. It's really messed up. Guys, I figured out the reason why I'm single. Apparently you have to go outside and meet people. Like you actually have to go outside and talk to them. Bruh. Yeah, it's gonna be a no for me. What? I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely. I've talked to my therapist about that already, but I'm screaming on the internet about that because, oh, I just need everyone to know, I guess. I don't talk to anyone, not via internet, uh, not in real life. I'm silent all the time. That's okay, I don't listen to women. Obviously I have no boyfriend and I'm very sexually frustrated. Hey! I either need to travel or f someone, I don't know. That's it, thank you for listening to that. I'm very lonely, I'm 21, I have no friends, I have no partner. It's nice being alone. No, it's not. Poor, poor thing. Young women are, apparently, in a crisis of loneliness. However, it's not simply that they feel lonely, it's that they're less connected than they've ever been. Fact. They're in a crisis of atomization. Where loneliness is a state of mind, atomization speaks to the reality of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's right. Although loneliness can present itself at any time, its current excess is a byproduct of atomization. Are you lonely? Yeah. <laughs> How come? Are you gonna make me emotional? <laughs> Am I lonely? Um... Yeah, it's obvious! I'd say I wish I had more friends. I don't have a lot of friends. More close friends. Friends. Girlfriends. I feel like I just don't have, like, a best friend that, like, I can tell anything to. But I do have a cat, so... I love cats. Dr. Vivek Murthy, the U.S. Surgeon General, says loneliness is an epidemic. The focus of an 80-page advisory he is releasing today. That's right. We're used to thinking about smoking and obesity as clear public health concerns. So you're saying loneliness is comparable to smoking in terms of the detriment to your health? Yeah, in terms of the risk that it poses for premature death, yes. <laughs> the report finds that about half of U.S. adults disclosed experiencing measurable levels of loneliness. Wow. And it warns that the physical consequences of poor connection can be devastating. Loneliness increases the risk for heart disease stroke, and among older adults, dementia. What? In the last few decades, we've lived through a dramatic pace of change. He ain't lying. We move more. We change jobs more often. We're living with technology that's profoundly changed how we interact and talk to each other. True. Across age groups, people are spending less time with each other in person than two decades ago. The advisory reported that this was most pronounced in young people aged 15 to 24. What? Take a look at this clip from a 23-year-old. No one prepares you for the loneliness that you feel in your 20s. I'm currently sitting alone in my apartment. It is 1 in the morning. I'm drinking water out of a wine glass because it's the only thing I have clean. And all of my friends are either with their boyfriends, with their husbands, with someone. And I feel like the odd one out because... I don't have anyone. I have myself and my dog. And don't get me wrong, I love being alone, but I just feel like people at this age are really selfish and you lose a lot of friends in the chaos of being in different phases of life and it sucks. And honestly, I just feel forgotten about and pushed to the side. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. It's important to recognize that for many people, relationships take priority over friendships as their focus of interest transforms. If you're not adaptable to status shifts, change, or loss, you're in for disappointment. No! Nothing stands still in any part of life, and if you're pinning your hopes on the idea that it will, you're going to struggle. <gasps> Developing a mental adaptability to changing circumstances is crucial for all men and women who are looking to avoid feeling lonely or pushed to the side. You damn right! To my 25 to 29 year olds, dating hits different. Now I know they say that 30 is prime time for women and I am not doubting that at all, but you do get a little anxious as you approach your dirty 30s, I'm not gonna lie. From a dating standpoint, 
30 years old isn't prime time. It's bordering more on last chance saloon. You're such a donut. Dating hits different and is a serious cause of anxiety because single women in this age range are often on the cusp of being forever unmarried. <laughs> a woman who's single, age 27 to 35, is in what Kevin Samuels referred to as the danger zone. Danger zone! According to Samuels, women in the danger zone need to prioritize looking for a husband, or they'll almost surely expire alone. That's good advice. So I went to the bar the other day with my girlfriend, and these 20 and 21-year-olds were hitting on us. And look, no, sh no shaming here, okay? If you're a cougar, nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. Boom. Roasted. When they asked me for my Snapchat, that's when I knew that first, it's a wrap, this conversation is done, and second, we are different generations, baby, keep it moving. When a woman starts humble bragging about men hitting on her, it's often because the once abundant male attention has noticeably slowed down. <laughs> a woman who brags or complains about getting hit on wins twice. She's received attention from the man who asked for her Snapchat, and she gets to be the center of attention again by making a TikTok about it. I am not at all trying to belittle young men. That's not the point of this video. It's just that dating really does hit different when you're between the age of 25 to 29, right before 30. It's a little awkward, right? Because half the people I went to high school with are married and having babies. And then the other half are women that are prioritizing their careers and being boss women. And then there's that one-off girl that no one really knows what she does, but she's doing it well. Oh, really? If you don't know what that one-off girl does, how do you know she's doing it well? And being a boss woman should come with a warning label. By all means, pursue your career, but be ready for what it brings. Depression and loneliness. The half of her friends that are having babies are likely doing so, because they understand that women are most fertile and have the highest chance of getting pregnant, aged between 19 and 26 years old. Enjoy the latter half of your 20s, girl. Whether you're single, in a relationship, married, or divorced, this is the time where you can do whatever the hell you want, and you can tell Karen it's because you're in your 20s. Take it from me, I'm turning 27 really soon, and I am honestly loving this era of my life because I know I'm exactly where I need to be, and so are you. Welcome to the Danger Zone. There is a major shift that happens in your late 20s, specifically around dating. You wake up one morning and you're no longer attracted to fancy cars or looking for his height or his income. You just want to know that he has a Costco card. <sighs> Sexting in your late 20s is just different. You know what I mean? Like, I was talking to this guy and he's like, ooh, are you horny, baby? It's like, yeah, Brian, I'm horny. Horny for stability. Now pump a white picket fence and family into me already. Jesus. <laughs> Between 29 and 31 years old, women sometimes enter the epiphany phase where they decide to try and settle down. Kabam! They're beginning to realize that younger and more desirable women will always exist, causing them to question their own sexual market value. <laughs> Recognizing their difficulty in competing with younger women and the prospect of being lonely, they'll settle for a man with a Costco card, stability, and a white picket fence. I'm just getting on here for all the girlies who are in their 30s. I'm 33, turning 34 next month. I'm just f***ing done dating. Like, excuse my language, but I'm done. Like, for a while there, I was on a kick for the younger guys because that was all that was hollering at me because I must say, I think I look pretty good for being 33. <laughs> Women scarcely date younger men until they hit the wall. Women are attracted to men with looks, money, and status, which typically translates to older men. That's right. If they've put in the commitment, 30 to 35-year-old men are the most confident, attractive, and successful that they've ever been. As such, they're more desirable to women than ever. <laughs> Many men this age choose to date younger women, since they generally find women between the ages of 21 to 24 the most attractive, this leaves post-wall women with fewer good romantic options. Just a quick question to anyone who's over 30. What are we supposed to be doing? Because I'm lost. Many women in this situation experiment with younger men, who are also struggling to date well, because women their age prefer older men. 
When a post-wall woman goes on a kick for younger men, it's usually because she's recognized that higher mileage equals lower value. So I was like, okay, I'm done with the young ones. Like, they're too immature. Like, I'm looking for something more serious in life. They, they're not doing it for me. Cool, whatever. <gasps> is it because the young ones aren't doing it for her? Or because it is them that are not taking her seriously? I have no idea. Let's look at her other TikToks for more of an idea. Waking these knees up out of winter hibernation for the summer streets. Sunday, 1.30 a.m., presumably on the summer streets. That's nasty. Not even younger men want a lady who practices her dance moves so that her knees are ready for the summer streets. I reunite with an ex that I was with when I was 22, and this was, like, always the one who got away from me. An alpha widow is a term used to describe a woman who holds attachment and is still fixated on the man who had the most impact in her life. He is three years older than me, going to be 37 in January. This man is emotionally unavailable. So they're too immature in their 20s, and then they're possibly still emotionally unavailable in their 30s. <laughs> I understand why my mom is 60 years old and still single and just said forget it because that's what it's about to be. Fact. What's bred in the bone will come out in the flesh and desirable men are hard to find because they're likely not looking for her. No way. According to this commentator, many women in a similar situation will look for a bailout in the mild-mannered good man that she never looked twice at when she was in her prime. It's their way of finally doing the right thing. The nice guy is her eject button off of the dating carousel and into a comfortable life as a suburban housewife. Without an escape plan, she might end up like this lady. I'm not trying to be one of those like melodramatic girls who gets on TikTok and is crying. Uh, I just happen to be a crier, sorry. I'm so goddamn tired of being the fifth wheel or the third wheel. And I like got into it with my friend today. And then she was like, well, it's a lose-lose. Either they don't invite you and then you're hurt because you're left out or I invite you and you're the third or the fifth wheel. I'm just over it. I'm exhausted by it. I'm like fucking tired of it. I'm tired of feeling like the loser who doesn't have someone. I'm tired of feeling like the person who like doesn't know how to like grow up and move on with their life. Sounds reasonable. If a man acted like this, society would deem him a man-child. That's interesting. Because the so-called man-child is typically described as someone who's emotionally immature, often refusing to own up to his responsibilities, and tends to avoid many of the milestones of adulthood. Sis, do not let that dude save you for later. You are not leftovers. You are not an option. You are not the type of woman to get ghosted, then picked back up when he's drunk or bored or horny or lonely or when that side thing falls through. That escalated quickly. Make no mistake, he was convinced he could get better and he was convinced he can come back and reclaim you when he wanted. While you're busy building him up for the next woman, he is tearing you down for the next man. Know your worth. This might be regarded as the post-wall rage of a leftover woman. I wonder if she's aware of this information here. Loneliness increases the risk for heart disease, stroke, and among older adults, dementia. And a woman not knowing her true worth in the dating market is one of the very things that has put her in the position of being unmarried and single in the first place. Here's a good reality check. If you say things like, all men are trash, or I only attract boys, or I don't know why he continues to come back to me, then girlfriend, girlfriend, you got to stop right there. No, no. Stop right there. Listen, men are not the problem here. You are. And I come from a place of love and empathy and busted eyeliner, but I also come from a place of reality, and this is what's happening. It's not like these men are just busting down your door and you're trying to shut it. No. You're like, oh, yeah, door's wide open. In fact, here I am with a cup of sugar. This is what's happening. You're picking losers and boys and then complaining about it. No! You can't continue to pick these men, enable the behavior you don't want to see, and then complain and bitch about it. If you don't want to see this behavior, stop tolerating it. Walk away. Start picking men who are high value. Yeah, they're out there. But are you interested in them or are you interested in the drama? The shit's chess. It ain't checkers. If commitment can't be captured from men because she now lacks SMV, the post-wall woman will often adopt an effinist approach. Doing so allows her to change the rules of the game 
to edit reality to be more in her favor. Subvert the patriarchy. Here's an example of a younger woman who's noticed that she might have been lied to. I just came to the realization why I'm single. Tight. Every guy that I'm like, oh yeah, he's attractive. I see their wives and they just look like so like, you know, like, not like this. Unfortunately, you're not very bright. Dude, I am I look crazy. Like, that's why guys don't want to wife me up. And I just come to this realization today. <laughs> I thought these men wanted, like, you know, big, strong, tough girls. Are you serious? I feel like all of them are like... Like super girly, and all these guys are like, "Yeah, that's my girl." That's she's like housewife stuff, and I'm over here like, I own my own business. I'm covered in tattoos. <laughs> I'm a little spazzy, but that's okay. We embrace it. But yeah, I, I don't think any guys gonna wife me up because they can't take me seriously, and I just realized that. A simple way for women to improve their relationship desirability is to lose all traces of masculinity from their appearance. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. The leftover woman will often try to redefine things to say that modern women, with no traditional wifely qualities, are attractive. Older, masculine, promiscuous women are who men should marry instead of virtuous, feminine women who prioritize building a family. Let's create an alternate reality where up is down, left is right, and black is white. Great idea. But how do we get people on board with this? Mm. Name calling. Okay. Public shaming. Yeah. Gaslighting and manipulation. Nice. Oh, we teach our alternate reality in schools, put it on TV, and force it onto society. Now we're talking. And we scream really, really loud anytime something doesn't go our way. <laughs> Right on. But what if that doesn't work? We censor them. Bingo. The truth about woke effinism is that it creates more problems than it solves. If up is down and left is right, then we're living an illusion that requires the blind compliance of both men and women to play along with in order to succeed. Run! Perhaps this is why effinism tries to conceal the true realities of the dating marketplace, promoting the view that female value is permanent, always high with no need for a woman to ever provide any sort of value proposition. As we age, doesn't matter how much money we accumulate, our degrees or professional accolades, the reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year. No matter how good we look, no matter how fit we are, men are still seeing primarily our presumed dwindling fertility as a knock against us. Quite possibly. And by the time you reach my age, 40, you will be faced with different choices relating to life partnership and motherhood. Now, I'm not saying that delaying marriage or motherhood is a bad option, but it's one that comes with its own consequences. And our women deserve to know on the front end of their decision making instead of on the back half. I've featured this lady in previous videos because she was preaching from the effinist playbook without applying any critical thought to what she was saying. However, she has to be given credit here because she's finally realized that women run into trouble when they're operating under a set of beliefs that don't coincide with reality. But she needs to watch out. The further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. Look, man, I do what I can do to help y'all. But the game is out there. And it's either play or get played.